to Nigerian Communications Satellite Limited, the commercial arm of Nigeria's space agency, is seeking to work with the Gombe state government to find ways to offer broadband access that can enhance the operations of small and medium enterprises. Recall that Nigeria's second communication satellite, NICOMSAT 1R, was developed and launched as a replacement for NICOMSAT 1 by China. Now, NICOMSAT 1R, with its onboard capabilities, can provide fixed and mobile communications. Now, the satellite can also support the implementation of the satellite based augmentation system, not only in Nigeria, but in the whole of Africa and parts of Europe and Asia. Now, after 12 years of operation and a series of management changes, NICOMSAT is on the rise again. A new boss has been named and she's doubting her organization can do more to add to the nation's internally generated revenue. Interesting. All right. Well, for more on this, I'm joined in the studio live by Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Nigeria Communications Satellite Limited, and Kechi Jane Eggerson. Glad to have you Good on air with me this morning. I also have Lassisi, uh, Lassisi Lawal. He is a DG, the DGM navigation expert in satellite field. Am I correct? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, very glad much. to have you, gentlemen Thank and you. lady in the studio. Let's start this way. What has Nikomsat done uh, for our digital economy here in Nigeria, and what is Nikomsat bringing to the table of the president's renewed hope agenda, if you like? Thank you for that question. Um, we've done a lot of things in the past. I'll start by saying that I think one of the things we've been known for is making sure that when it comes to broadband access, it is inclusive. Because we are the one of the only two infrastructure companies the, com the country has. So with Galaxy and Nikomsat, we provide the broadband access when it comes to satellite and Galaxy does that when it comes to fiber. Um, but when it comes to the digital economy, we do much more. You know, if you look at the mandate we have as an agency, so the Federal Ministry of you know, Communication, Information and Digital Economy, uh, one of the mandates is that we want to provide ubiquitous access across the country that is affordable. And there are very few that can do it, especially the private sector. It's difficult to do that because the tendency is to go to where you have the urban areas or where people have uh, a higher income. Why we don't have that limitation? We can provide the services for state governments in places where they are underserved or unserved. We can go there. We don't have to, you know, lay some fiber requiring the right of way. We just have to put up a dish if there's a sky, and we can provide broadband access. Yeah. Okay. Well, now you're seeking to work with Gombe State Government and find ways uh, on this broadband access. And I'm just wondering uh, yeah. before I get to La Sisi, you know, whether it's just for Gombe State alone. Or is this going to go across the entire country? And how soon is that going to be? Well, a lot is going to unveil. So Gombe is just one of our partners because Gombe houses a regional office for us that covers North Central, North East. And what we do with those regional centers, we go there and you know, create the sensitization, make sure that we have the right partners and stakeholders we are working with. And Gombe has been very welcoming to help us reach those areas, you know, the North Central, the North East. And we want to work with institutions there and government agencies there. But the, off, the services and the products we offer is for the entire nation. It's not limited to just the region. Okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I, you will still answer this question, but I'll, I'll get back uh, to you in a bit. Uh, there was a stakeholders meeting, uh, breakfast meeting. Just let us in into what has been the topic of discussion or the topics of discussion. Okay, uh, about the stakeholder. Uh, the stakeholder meeting is actually going is to this be sent. This morning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is going to hold this morning. It's going to hold morning. this morning at yeah, nine o'clock. Oh, breakfast meeting. Yes. Okay, it's going yeah. to hold. It's this not held yet. Exactly. No. Okay. Uh, okay. What do you intend? Maybe we should put it like that. What, what do we oh, intend? Oh, I, I should ask you, not last year. <laughs> okay. What? 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 Uh, are you going to bring to the table? And what are we looking at to, to see in this? I think the key thing for us with this is to actually put out that message that NICOMSAT is open for business. We have relaunched our services, we've reprioritized. A key focus currently as we see it is enhanced service delivery, very important to us. We also really focus on making sure that our infrastructure is reliable and that's why we can confidently come and say to our stakeholders, our partners, our clients that we are open for business. And of course, something we're doing in the medium and long term is also make sure that our technology is continuous because uh, we have to be aware of the market reality 
capabilities and the fact that technology is evolving. And we're doing all this in a way that we are also making sure that we're bringing tools and productivity uh, activities that will help improve our service delivery. So this morning is for us to go and publicly declare with our stakeholders, our partners, our clients, that we are open for business. We want you to see us, which is our vision, as your preferred satellite solution provider. Well, I'm, I'm going to come to, back to you because you worked with Avanti Communication Satellite in the UK. So I'll get yeah. back to you. But let's see, yes. you are an expert in in satellite field, the GM navigation. That's correct. Uh, talk to us about your expertise as it has to do with Nick Comsat 1R, which of course replaced Nick Comsat 1. Thank you so much. First, uh, let me start by saying um, Nikomsat 1R is actually a hybrid communication satellite. And after successful launch of observation satellite by the then um, President Olusegun Obasanjo in early 2000, he actually now commissioned a act that we start a communication satellite, considering the fact that it holds sway in terms of providing access, broadcast needs of the nation, telecommunication and all of that. And we're quite, we print. We didn't go to China because China had the best of technology at that time, but we went to China because China was willing to train and transfer knowledge to a large extent to us. We're arguably um, the only country in Africa that manage and operate our stuff like by ourselves, unlike other nations. So. We have expertise Which is as a result of the trading that China yes of China. Mm -hmm. So we have expertise in communications that light like subsystem itself, and we have expertise in the operation. And today, if we have an assembly integration and test centers where 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 satellites are manufactured, Nigerian engineers trained about fifty, more than fifty, can actually lay their hands in design, not only in design but assembly integration still working on that but by a okay. we have not, start, we have not started up. that yet yes we haven't okay. it's still in the process which is actually on the the national space research and development agency when are you looking to start that yes when, um, are, you, when are you looking to oh really that's not within our mandate at the moment okay not within yes. your mandate all right let me come back to you uh Nkechi. uh you work like i said earlier with avanti communication satellite in the uk um but it's a different market Nigeria is a different ball game generally in everything, apart from having the largest uh, population, the largest market. What's your plan to penetrate the already, if you like, saturated markets uh, filled with uh, foreign satellites? Uh, what's your plan? I'll start by saying I worked with Avanti, but I, uh, my, my remit was West Africa. So I was heading the operations for West Africa. So when it comes to this market, I've spent two decades in the African market. And I don't think that's anything that can compete with that unless you've spent more. But that understanding of the market is what we bring to the table. You know, we've, the fact that we understand what the users want, what the market wants, and that's what we are trying to transform Nikomsat to do, to focus on the priority. And if I get to your, your second question in terms of what do we bring to mm. the table, isn't it? And what's been your experience working in the African uh, market for for that those so working in years. the two decades I have worked because I've worked for a lot for multinational. I think the biggest thing is an understanding of the market. There's a tendency to white label a product and come and dump it in the market. It doesn't work. It's not relevant if it doesn't speak to the user. You need to understand and adapt it for the market. And you know, all through my career, I think this is the first time I can proudly say I'm working for an African company. Like Lassisi said, these are engineers that are trained to monitor our own satellite for our own market. Who better understands the fact that you need to know how to package a solution for that um, Aisha, Nkechi, whatever, in that remote area, in the way that they can consume it best. Not the way it's consumed in Europe or in the US, exactly. but the way that the Nigerian needs to consume it. Because you have to target your you market target for it to make sense. Now, yes. talking about targeting your market for it to make sense, you talked about the fact that this will enhance the business operations of SMEs. Yes. How will this happen? Okay, so for a long time it's been you're providing a pipe, that's access, broadband, and now we're saying we want to give you an integrated solution. And you see we've been calling out to partners because we want to partner and create an integrated solution that solves a use case. So you give somebody internet, so what after internet? 
what makes sense is that if that's a small business, there's an application layer that helps them with digital tools. It could be financial tools, tools to help them with training on digital literacy that can help their business. And that's what we want to do. One of the things we went to Gombe to do is that you give an integrated solution. Is it an ed tech solution, a Greek tech solution? Whatever the use case is, not just the broadband, but it's more integrated. And we do that by collaborating because we don't do all that. We don't build those applications, but we know partners that do. Something else also we are doing a lot is to partner with sister agencies, be it NIPOS, be it NITA, be it USPF, because we can also achieve that mandate alone. We're doing that together with these agencies. All right, uh, I'll still stick with you. The question of, you speak to uh, implementation of the satellite-based augmentation system. Speak to it, and what can I do for the economy? I would refer to the experts. To the <laughs> All right. Yes. And uh, before jumping into that, sir, even on the issue of use case that my MD just mentioned, the use case we're also trying to drive with, um, uh, with how on board is also, you know, to fast track United Nations Sustainable Development Goal. Goal one, goal two, goal three, goal four. Goal one, goal two is about no poverty, no hunger. Just last year, we actually trained visa installers to be able to also take our installations, applications of the satellite to rural areas. Then you talk about goal three. Just this year, we showcased, you know, the application of communication satellite in telemedicine. A good example was internet dis displaced camp. Um, a far place in Aquaibum, where the current governor was quite impressed and said if he comes on board as state governor of Aquaibum, saying he's going to deploy communication satellites in all cottage hospitals around, we showcase their use, use of, you know, communication satellite to drive digital health inclusion, even when you have no terrestrial ICT infrastructure or even in swampy areas. Then, of course, education too as well. As, you um, have, you have been away, answered, I'm not cutting, but you have, you have in a way delved into uh, the answer to my next question, which is on, in general terms, yes. how will this enhance the lives, because you're the expert in the satellite field, they enhance the life of Nigerians, be it in communication, which of course were involved, TV stations and, and newspapers, and generally Nigerians, how will this whole uh, gamut really affect the lives of Nigerians. Fantastic. One area that MD has actually come to bear when she um, inspected our direct-to-home infrastructure was on the utilization of the direct-to-home infrastructure to actually drive, you know, the broadcasting sector, including even tele-education they just mentioned about. You could actually reach out to the uneducated, to the girl child up there in the north, through, you know, free to air. We're already revamping that sector, expand on that sector. You could take your time and come over to the direct to home infrastructure. Just one or two things that she has already presented to the Honorable Minister to overhaul. So to also help with what yes. you're saying. So there's, there's a key thing that we're very good at that's inclusion. A yeah. lot of people. I, I wanted to get you to talk about expand on this inclusion so stuff. Inclusion means that. Um, the way traditional businesses work, they are profit-driven. Profit um, an average mobile operator would not go to a location if he doesn't have probably like a minimum of 2,000 people because it doesn't make business case for him. His total cost of operation, it doesn't make business case. I don't need that barrier. I don't have it. If I have two people in a village, I can still provide you service with my dish. I don't need 2,500 people to say I can only put a base station when I have it. So that allows pe people to feel included because you're talking about digital economy. Without broadband, that trader, that SME has no access to whatever you're saying. They don't understand digital economy. So we can give them that and that find, makes them inclusive. Whatever service they want to use, if the government is pushing educational service, is pushing financial service, is pushing services for SME, agriculture, whatever, if it needs broadband, we can allow you give that access to everyone in that location. That's one key thing we are very good at. And it's back to the second question where you're talking about, you know, how do we bring that to bear? I think COVID showed it, isn't it? Because in COVID, it became clear that ICT affects everyone. Yeah. It's not just the startups or the tech companies. The doctors couldn't even talk to their patient. It had to be yeah. online. Kids couldn't go to school. It had to be online. Traders, it had to be e-commerce. Everybody was touched. But the biggest problem was that we found it only happened in the cities. 
Yeah. If people outside the cities had no access, they suffered the most. We can change that. That's what, that's what my Comstad can do. How fast are you looking at changing that? Well, we do have a mandate to make sure that 70% of the nation is covered by 2027. We are very determined and driven to try and achieve that with our sister agency, Galaxy. So that's what our eyes are focused on right now. All right. Uh, Back to SBAS before we run out of time. Um, SBAS came to stay as a result of issues that we lack on GNSS system, what we call traditionally GPS. That's the one owned by U.S. But in the early 90s, after the geo-regional politics and conflict, you know, countries and regions begin to now have their own um, genesis system. So, of course, Russia have their own GLONASS, GPS, USA, Beidou of China, Galileo of Europe. But what SBAS comes to do, particularly in applications that involve safety of life, particularly in the aviation sector, is you want, you know, four key performance parameters to come to bear. Precisioning, you know, um, availability, continuity of uh, signal, and most importantly, integrity, that the, which is a measure of correctness of the trust you have on your signal, including warning alert on the limit for horizontal and vertical. Nice, Which is interesting. Yes. <laughs> I love what I'm hearing. I hope it works out like that. Uh, all right, your last... <laughs> your, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was quite, it was quite I dramatic. I don't want to try to say that we, we do more than broadband. I know I've talked a lot about broadband. We do broadcasting. Like, for example, the National Carrier NTO, yeah. we carry their, their services. Okay. We do transponder leasing. We do mobile backup for mobile yeah. operators. We do what he's saying, which is navigation. Navigation. So, tracking airlines. So there's so much we do. Though some of them are for high-end enterprise clients, mm -hmm. but we do quite a lot. It's not just broadband. Okay, we'll leave it there. I mean, uh, the time has caught up with us. Yeah. Uh, I just, just briefly, talks of launching more satellites by 2025. Should we expect something new? Just briefly. There's something cooking in the pipeline. Something <laughs> cooking. I hope it dawns fast and we can sal so we can salivate. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, uh, the MD CEO, uh, Nkechi Jane Egerton Idehen. Yes, I got it. The MD CEO of Nigerian Communications Satellite Limited. Thank you for being here in the studio. And of course, Lassie Lawal, uh, DGM uh, Navigation. Thank you very much. Expert in Satellite Field. Thank, thank you both thank for you being here in the studio.